Hello everybody, this is Jonathan and today I'll be installing NetBSD. NetBSD is an operating system that is part of the BSD family. It is designed for servers. It was not designed for desktop. If you want to run BSD for desktop, I would recommend to get FreeBSD. But NetBSD was designed for, um, for servers um, and not for desktop. Um, so I would recommend you guys to get free BSD if you want to want to run BSD on a on your desktop PC for like everyday use, for example, browsing the web and stuff like that. Maybe running some um, some software like Blender, I would recommend to use um, free BSD. But Open but Net BSD is great for um, servers. Okay, let's go ahead and install it. So go to the subheading that says um, Get Net BSD. And select which CPU you're using. So, for example, if you if you are using AMD sixty four, go ahead and install the um, AMD sixty four version. If you guys are using ARM, which means systems like Raspberry Pi, then the slate ARM, and so on and so on and so on. Then so they have many different um, CPU support, as you guys can see. But I'm going to go ahead and install the AMD sixty four um, version. And once you are um, on that web page, and once I've selected the CPU, we should be able to go down to release info and now select the ISO image and click it, and that should start installing the ISO image. Okay, so basically, to create a new file to machine, all I need to do now is just click on to new, and from here, you guys can call it like something like NetBSD. Um, NetBSD, let's go ahead and select the ISO image. So if I click on to others, then I should be able to select NetBSD 10.0 AMD 64 bit for ISO. Let's select um, next. You guys can give it as, mem as much memory as you truly want. So I give it that much memory. You guys can give it as much processing power as you truly want. So I'm going to give it around four cores. So yes, yeah, so that looking good. Now you guys can select next. Um, give it as much storage as you truly want for this operating system. I'll give it around maybe being 30 gigabytes to be on the safe side. Now all you do now is just select next, select finish, click on the start button and hopefully it does boot up and it does seem like it is working. Okay, cool. Let's just go ahead and make this bigger screen. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and capture. Okay, it should automatically um, boot normally. But if you want to boot normally, you just press on to one. Because right now it's booting up. Um, do not show this message again, capture. Cool. So the menu driven tool is designed to help you install NetBSD to a hard disk or upgrade an existing NetBSD system with a, min with a minimum of work. In the following menu, uh, menus type the reference letter A, B, C to select an item or type control N dash control P to select the next and previous item. The arrow keys and page up and page down may also work. Uh, activate the current selection from the menu by typing the enter key. Okay, so let's go ahead and install it in English. Um, so that means you're using this installer in the English language. So now we have to select our keyboard type. So the keyboard type I'm using is UK English. Press on the enter key. Let's select install NetBSD to hard drive. Um, Yes, let's go ahead and select yes. It's basically warning you that we must uh, um we must back up your data before we do continue because this will this will wipe your um drive. So that means you're gonna lose all of your data. So make sure you do back up. If we're installing this on real hardware, so let me go ahead and select A because that's the drive I want to use, and I'm gonna go ahead and use the master boot record. Um, this is the correct geometry. Um, let's use the entire disk. Let's use default partition sizes. Partition sizes are looking good. Um, shall we continue? Yes. And it should technically... Um, let's go ahead and use um, BIOS console. Let's do a full installation. Let's install it from the, um, from the image media. And it should start downloading. So I'll be back when it's done.
Okay, so basically it has finished um, installing. All we need to do now is press on the enter key to continue. And now we're gonna have to create a password for the root user. So to create a new password, all you need to do is type down your new password into the um, into the field. Press on the enter key to confirm. I have to retype it, so just retype the password. Press on the enter key and hopefully everything is looking good. Amazing. So over here will be allow, will allow you to um, configure the additional items. So you can go ahead and configure the network. You guys can configure the time zone. I think the root shell is fine. Um, you guys can change the root password. Well, guys can enable installation of binary package, install, fetch, and unpack PK, PKG SRC. We guys can enable some stuff. We guys can enable XDM. We guys can enable CDD. LVM and you guys can also enable the um, RAID frame. I'll go ahead and configure the network. Let's go ahead and use this available interface. Press on the enter key. Um, perform auto configuration, yes. Your host name. So now I have to enter your host name. So I'm going to put down something like um, net, um, net BSD. There's on the enter key with DMS, no name. Are they okay? Yes. Is the network version to the actual first machine? Yes. Cool. So we just have to configure the network. Let's go into the time zone and just select which country you're in. So I'm going to go ahead and select Europe and I'm going to go all the way to London. So that should be Europe and then London. So if I go ahead and select Europe, London, if I now select exit, turn over here, as you guys can see, we're able to configure the time zone. We got the root shell. We have set the password for the root user. Um, let's go ahead and add a user. I think everything by default being enabled is fine. Let's go ahead and add a user. Um, enter your username. So we're going to enter John. Do you wish to add this user to the group world? The group world is basically um, allowing him to be part of the root. So he can like be able to be for admin. So yes, we do want to make him for admin, and we guys can select his user shell. I'm just going to select the A1, give him a new password. You type the password. Let's go ahead and select finish configuring. Press enter to continue. And it looks like it was able to be installed. So now all guys can now do is select reboot for computer, and that will reboot it. But what I want to do is what I want to do is I'm gonna get rid of the ISO image. Um, let me just close out of that part of the system. Why don't I close? Um, okay. Let's go back to the first machine. Let's go to settings. Let's go to storage, and we can get rid of the ISO image. Um, remove. Select. Okay. Now let's go ahead and start it up, and hopefully um, it does boot up. Let's go ahead and boot normally. From there, okay, John. Now enter your password. Okay, looks like we're in. Now, if I do start X, I do believe, um, start X, that might actually load up to the desktop environment. Okay, so we're able to log into the desktop environment. It is very basic, but um, it's pretty good. <laughs> Um, so these are some utilities you guys can obviously open up and close from here. It looks like it's more like a taskbar. Um, but over here, this is a terminal, and we guys can just change the desktop view or just change the um, desktop from here. So there's like the four of them by default. As you guys can see, we guys can literally drag it around. Um, but I can't drag around the clock, but we guys can drag around the terminal. And yeah, we guys can obviously go to applications and. Here's a menu of all the applications that we got within this GUI, it looks like. So yeah, I never really used it that much for this desktop environment, so I don't know how to use it completely. But this is <coughs> mostly was made for desktop. That's pretty cool. Eco. Hello. World. Now if press on the enter key, it happens at hello world to the screen. So yes, the terminal does indeed work within this um, within this um, desktop environment, which it comes with.
Anyway, guys, if you like this video, please put a like and please subscribe, and I will see you guys um, next time. Bye-bye.